Hello friends, this video is on radius and in this we will learn about the parts of this bone, side determination, muscle attachments and applied anatomy. Radius is the lateral bone of the forearm and the medial one is the ulna. Now which type of bone is radius? It is a long bone and therefore it has got three parts like any other long bone and they are the upper end, the lower end and the intervening shaft. Now how to determine the side of the radius? You have to keep three things in your mind. First is the upper end, it has a disc like structure which is known as head of the radius. The lower end is expanded from side to side. Second is that at the upper end, we also have another bony uh, projection or protuberance which is known as radial tuberosity and this should be directed medially. Third is when we look at the lower end of the radius, anteriorly it is smooth but posteriorly we have grooves and a tubercle which is known as dorsal tubercle of Lister. So the post, this should be directed posteriorly. Keeping in this in mind, this bone belongs to right side. Now what are the joints formed by the radius? In total, it participates in formation of five joints and these are the first is the elbow joint. So here we can see head of the radius is going to articulate with capitulum of the humerus to form the radiohumeral part of the elbow joint. Elbow joint is hinge type of joint. Then we have three uh, radio ulna joints, superior, intermediate and inferior. Superior radio ulna joint we can see between the head of the radius and a notch on the ulna along with the annular ligament. This is a pivot type of joint. Second is intermediate radio ulna joint. This is a fibrous type of joint. Here the radius is connected to ulna via introscious membrane and this is syndesmosis, a fibrous joint, syndesmosis. This is the only fibrous joint in the upper limb. The third is the inferior radio ulna joint. Here the head of the radius, uh, sorry, head of the ulna articulates with the lower end of the radius and this is also a pivot joint. The fifth and the last one is between the inferior surface of the radius and the two carpal bones that is scaphoid and lunate and this is radiocarpal joint or uh, you call it wrist joint and this is ellipsoid type of joint. Now what are the parts of the upper end? We can see here disc like head, the superior surface is going to be concave which will articulate with the capitulum. Then we have a neck and here we have the attachment of the annular ligament. Then we see here there is a bony prominence which is known as radial tuberosity. Coming to borders and surfaces of radius, like any other long bone, this will also have three borders and three surfaces. So the three borders are anterior border which starts from the inferior end of the radial tuberosity. Initially it is present as oblique line known as anterior oblique line and continues downward till the styloid process. Then we have the sharpest border of the radius that is the intermediate border again starting from the radial tuberosity and going till the lower end to the posterior border of the ulna notch. Then we have posterior border. This is actually a mirror image of anterior border. So in the upper part, it runs as an oblique line known as posterior oblique line and it is only apparent or obvious in the middle part of the bone. Lower down, the posterior border is not very obvious. Then we have three surfaces. The three surfaces are anterior surface, which can be seen here between the anterior and the introscious border. Then we have lateral surface which is present between the posterior border and the anterior border on the lateral aspect. Just remember the radial bone is a lateral bone so it will have a lateral surface and it will have a medial border. So the three borders are anterior, posterior and medial border. The surfaces will be anterior surface, posterior surface and lateral surface. So then let us look at the posterior surface. This is the posterior surface and this is present between the introscious border and the posterior border. Coming to lower end of the radius, we will look at the bones it articulates with and the surfaces. Lower end has got five surfaces and these are first we have the anterior surface which can be seen here and it has a ridge also here. Along this uh, anterior surface the radial artery can be palpated against this anterior surface. Then we have the medial surface. Medial surface is this one and at the lower part we can see here there is ulnar notch. This is going to articulate with the head of the ulna. 
then we have inferior surface and here we have two articular surfaces one is triangular the other is quadrilateral the lateral triangular part right this is going to articulate with scaphoid and the quadrilateral part will articulate with the new lunate bone thereby forming the radiocarpal or wrist joint ulnar bone does not directly participate in formation of wrist joint then we have the posterior surface so posterior surface the most important structure we have already seen there that is the dorsal tubercle of lister there are many grooves but the most important groove is the one which lies medial to the uh, dorsal tubercle and which tendon passes in this groove which is medial to dorsal tubercle this is often asked in viva this tendon is the tendon of extensor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus and the last uh, surface would be the lateral surface which is continuous with the styloid process now coming to insertion so we will have uh, or attachments of the muscles so we will have some muscles inserted and some taking origin let us first consider the muscles which are inserted here so to remember that just remember two muscles responsible for supination they will be inserted two muscles responsible for pronation they will be inserted and one muscle which has in its name radialis word that is brachioradialis so let us start with the first one that is biceps brachii biceps brachii is inserted on the posterior part of the radial tuberosity the anterior surface of the radial tuberosity is covered by a bursa separating it from the tendon of biceps brachii so first muscle which is responsible for supination also that is here attached and then we have the second muscle which is responsible for supination that is attached to upper one fourth of the lateral surface of radius and this is supinator so you can remember upper part two supinator muscles biceps brachii on the radial tuberosity and on the lateral surface uh, one fourth upper one fourth of lateral surface we have the supinator muscle now coming to pronator muscle along the middle of the lateral aspect of radius we have a roughened area and there we have insertion of pronator teres muscle now before i tell you about the second pronator muscle let us see here along the lateral aspect of the uh, lateral surface of the radius just above the styloid process we have insertion of brachioradialis so now it is easy to remember radial tuberosity posterior surface biceps brachii and along the lateral surface three muscles from above downwards supinator pronator teres brachioradialis and the last muscle which is inserted here on the radius that is on the anterior surface lower one fourth of the radius so uh, anterior surface on the lower fourth right of the radius the muscle attached is quad pronator quadratus right so insertion is clear of five muscles now let us see which muscles will take origin so the muscles that are going to take origin they will be going to the digits right so there will be three muscles for the uh, for the thumb and one muscle for the fingers so let us see them on the anterior surface if you see you will have muscles their name should be starting with flexor because anterior compartment of the forearm is the flexor compartment so you have one muscle for the four uh, fingers and one muscle for the thumb because this is a lateral bone so it will have more muscles for the thumb here so here the muscle which is attached to anterior oblique line is the flexor digitorum superficialis and the muscle taking origin from almost upper 3/4 of the anterior surface of the radius is the flexor pollicis longus now two more muscles so these two muscles will be also going to the thumb right and these are because this is the posterior surface so extensor word should come to your mind and the abductor word right so these two muscles are abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis right not longus extensor pollicis brevis that will take origin from ulna okay so the four muscles are which take origin uh, anterior surface flexors you should remember posterior surface abductor and extensor you should remember three muscles are going to the thumb and one muscle going to the digits
okay what is dinner fork deformity so what happens actually is when the uh, radius is fractured at its distal part at the junction of distal 1/4 and the upper 3/4 this is also known as colles fracture uh, so what happens here is the bone resembles this part of the bone resembles like a dinner fork that's why the name is dinner fork deformity what exactly happens here is that the when a person falls on outstretched hand then the pressure is transmitted to the radius bone because that is participating in formation of wrist joint ulna does not participate so most commonly the radius one is the bone which is going to fracture so after the fracture the distal fragment that is pulled dorsally and is going to override the proximal end and that's why it starts resembling the dinner fork and why it is pulled dorsally and overrides the proximal segment because of the pull of the extensor muscles and this is known as dinner fork deformity that's all so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again